and it was your mum really that got you sort of like the great outdoors, walking, enjoying yeah. the great outdoors, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So for her, I mean, to lose her, um, that was 20 years ago, did it help when you went out into the mountains? Did that help you kind of come to terms with the death of your mum? Yeah, I mean, walking was something that we had always done together. So when I, you know, when she died, I continued to walk. It helped me to feel closer to my mother. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, the grief was just too raw then, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then I got married and it ran into difficulties mm -hmm. quite quickly. And it was the marriage breaking down really that pushed me, you know, towards the hills. Yeah, just to escape. To escape, yeah. Well, I get that completely, absolutely. But, you know, some people would just maybe go for a wee stroll. You did, <laughs> you did all of these incredible mountains. It's really tough. I mean, you talk about it in the book. I love the fact you're saying just another mountain. Is mm. that how you thought about it in your mind? You know, I've just got another one to do and then another one to do. Actually, my little boy was like, oh, mum, please, <laughs> no more, no <laughs> more. Just another mountain. Yeah, 20 years after your mum dies, you get told you've got breast cancer. Yeah. I don't know how you deal with that. You've dealt with it with great courage and humour, but I don't actually know how you come to terms with that. Really tough. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. I mean, you, the news when I, when I got it was just like a punch in the guts. Yeah. I had been expecting it because of mum. Right. So, I, you know, I, I knew it was probably something that was going to happen to me. Mm. Just didn't know when. And, yeah, coming to terms with it was, was tricky, but couple of weeks and I was like you know accepting it yep. and just get on get on with treatments I knew how I reacted when my mother mm. became ill you know the first time round I went completely off the rails yeah which I talk about in the yes book. no you're very honest you're very honest Sarah and I like that because it's, there's no point in writing a book like this if you're not going to be honest I mean the thing is the book was written for myself Right. right, and to pass down to my two sons. And the idea was that I would have an uncut version for me and then I get a cleaned up version for the kids. Right, okay. okay I never had any idea that it, the book was going to end up mm. published and I would be sitting here. But it's a today. fascinating story, though. That's the thing. It is a fascinating story. And it's a story of survival. Because you are, you've got your two year checkups soon, haven't you? Yes. And you're doing okay. I'm fine right now. You're doing yeah. okay yeah, and doing hanging great. on to that, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. What I thought was really interesting, and in the book you talk about it again with the, uh, you know, it's a sad thing, but with a lot of humour, was taking your mum's ashes to the mountains, but to yeah. Nepal. You mm -hmm. took to Nepal to yeah. be in the Himalayas. Um, you know, she lost a great love of her life. Um, he was a mountain, uh, Jerry was a mountaineer, and they were due to be married in 1975. Um, Mum was actually shopping in Glasgow for her wedding shoes at the time. Oh, so, um, yeah, it was really difficult for, for her and it changed the course of both her and my mm. life forever. Yeah. You know, um, and it was something that wasn't ever spoken about. You know, I just I was brought up, you know, children are seen and not heard, mm. so don't talk about difficult things. Yeah. And Mum had been really destroyed by his loss. Um, she barely spoke to anyone for like over six months, wow. you know, just... Yep, just totally just, destroyed by it, totally crushed by it. Yeah. So did you feel by taking her ashes back there, it was somehow completing a circle, it felt right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally, yeah, yeah. Because, because I, you know, I came to, to learn that she had never actually forgotten him. Mm. When I was researching for writing my story, I went through all our old calendars and every single ninth of May had been circled by her. Wow. And I realised that was the day that he had died. Gosh. But we had never spoken of it at all. Yeah. And when, um, when she was dying, she, she was taken up to the local hospital and I followed the ambulance up. As soon as I got there, Mum sent me straight home and she said, look, could you go home and fetch me the bangle that Jerry bought for me? Um, so I did. I just, you know, she'd yeah. never forgotten that love. Gosh, that's amazing, isn't it? It's extraordinary. Yeah. Really, it is really good. And I love the way you, you talk about that and, and the way you talk about your mum with huge 
huge affection. She's been a remarkable woman and obviously it really inspired, inspired you. I love your blog. Your blog's called Smacking Cancer in the Face. I love that. <laughs> Again, it's this sense of humour you've got. We need to go out for a drink. <laughs> we really do. And the world is so, so tiny that you were taught at school by my auntie. I know. Up in Nairn by my yes. auntie Helen. Yes. That, that is amazing. Home who economics. Gave, who gave me a row. She did. She did, yes. She gave us all a row. Don't yes. worry about it. It wasn't just you. It Never was fine. cook the wooden spoon. Never cook. Don't leave Never. the spoon in the Never pot. That's right. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so thank much. You. And Sarah Jane's book, Just Another Mountain, it's out tomorrow. And our Change and Check breast cancer campaign continues as well, growing support from all of those famous faces, including Madonna. And you can download our stickers showing the symptoms to look out for from the website.